In today's ETF PRISM report, we're going to discuss the idea of an ETF bubble. We've heard a lot of news as of late about the markets at all time highs and ETFs have uh, started to be blamed for participating or causing that. And it's somewhat easy to understand, right? So a chart like this from ETF Global uh, shows the growth of AUM and ETFs averaging over the last 10 years about 19.4% a year. That's miraculous exponential growth. And you can understand why headlines like this ETF bubble uh, are coming out every day or this one, watch out for the trillion dollar stock bubble perpetuated by ETFs and index funds. So the real question becomes, is there a bubble and is that bubble being caused by ETFs? Now at Terosa, we often talk about the idea of having a qualitative idea, hence ETFs causing a bubble, and then using quantitative data to either support or take away to deny that idea. Um, this tool that you see here is our ownership influence software. We created it when we started the firm about five years ago, and it was a way for us to quantify whether or not ETFs were affecting the valuation of individual stocks. So what it does is it takes the 500 ETFs focused on U.S. equities and compares them to all the U.S. equities. Well, essentially the, the Russell 3000. Um, and what it tells us is right now, on average, ETFs own about 6.29% of the market cap of every stock. So that's the average. Some are going to be higher, some are going to be lower. Uh, higher is going to mean that they're being influenced. Lower is going to mean that they're not. On par means probably not that much. All that said, I do want to be clear, this number continuously is growing. When we built the software originally about five years ago, the number started at 2.67%. So let's use an example. We'll take Apple. Um, Apple is 4.7% owned by ETFs. Apple represents 2.5% of our investable universe and only 2% of ETF assets it's underowned slightly by ETFs. I think it's very hard to argue that Apple is being influenced by ETFs or that's what's pushing up the bubble. I would say this to be true of just about all the large cap kind of S&P kind of names. I do not believe that ETFs are what is causing the market to hit all time highs. They're simply being an access point. So if the broad based bubble isn't true, what is? So I want to step back here to this article, another one talking about um, index fund bubbles and the theory and Bill Ackman explaining away certain, call it, well, they're calling it smoke screens, but there may be some things that are true here. So there's three points that are highlighted in this article that I want to deep dive into. Uh, first being that money flows into index funds buoy values. I believe that to be true, but not on the broad based area, not on the S&P or the Vanguard total market index. We're going to deep dive a little bit more into where it does in a few minutes. Number two, it perpetuates or encourages active managers to look like indexes. Um, I don't really buy any truth to that one at all. But number three was the one that I found most interesting. And it's kind of the idea of the long game that passive investing um, can detract from good proxy voting and good changes in management and things like that. So the reality is that although we don't believe there is a broad based bubble caused by ETFs, we do believe that there are two types of bubbles that ETFs have extended or expanded. The first being in very specific subsectors. The second being a long game uh, where they are creating a different form of corporate governance through the way they vote proxies. So now I'd like to de dive deeper into that. And we'll do that by going back to our tool. So we took a look at Apple. Now I wanna show you a part of our tool that helps us generate ideas. This gives me a list each day of the most over-owned and under-owned stocks by ETFs. And one thing you'll notice as you look through this list of the overowns, a lot of them say REIT or Realty, Realty, uh, Property Trust, Properties. 
And that's a really good indication of where we see a unique bubble in the ETF space. The subsector of real estate is a place where ETFs appear, appear to be pushing up value. So let's just use this as an example. National retail properties, well-known REIT, 17% of its market cap is owned by ETFs. When you go look at the holders, it's a pretty amazing set. It's owned by the big REIT ETF, not a surprise. It's owned by the dividend ETFs, not a surprise. It's in the mid caps, the small caps. And then again, in the mid caps, it's in both growth and value. No wonder why this thing is not trading on its own valuation. So that's more of a, a niche -y name. Let's take a look at a more well-known REIT, Simon Property Group, probably the most well-known REIT in history. It says about 12%, um, still another number that seems high. It also only represents about 21% of our investable universe, but 41, I mean, 21 basis points of our investable universe, 41 basis points of ETF assets. If you go look at Simon Property Group even further, what you'll see is the insiders own very little stock and Vanguard owns 14% of the market cap. So in my opinion, this is an area where ETFs are perpetuating a bubble. It's in this kind of subsector. But this Vanguard example takes us a step further into the long game, which is if ETFs are going to own 14, 15, 20% of the market cap, what are they doing in terms of governance, of, in terms of proxy voting, in terms of perpetuating values and ESG concepts across the board to these companies? In a lot of ways, if they're not voting properly, they are actually the antithesis of the ESG agenda. So what I did is I went and looked at Vanguard's proxy voting guidelines. So the, now that we're moving on to the second bubble, I think this is one that takes a much longer time to get to. But I read through this whole thing and I found very little information on how they actually vote from an ESG perspective. So I searched a little bit further and I found this wonderful statement from them Let's zoom in a little bit. But the statement is pretty telling. It basically says we do care, but we're obligated to maximize returns. And if you care a lot, why don't you go buy our social fund? Uh, this is such a contradiction in my mind. I can't even fathom. They're basically saying our little fund that's social focused, uh, that's where we actually do this. Everywhere else, we're voting the other way the contradiction blows me away but i thought if they're the biggest or the second biggest and they're perpetuating a a guideline that i don't quite agree with what is the biggest one doing and i gotta say i was much happier with the results so if we go look at blackrock they actually include esg in their overall proxy process and they have a wonderful white paper outlining exactly what they do in that process and how they go about it. Now, I read through it in depth. I don't agree with everything in here. So one of the things is separation of chairman from CEO. I'm a big believer in the owner operator concept. So don't love this one, but that's okay. I can find out what it is and use it. Um, they do have a wonderful, let me just scroll to it, explanation of their entire ESG process described right here. So this is something I would encourage investors to go look at when choosing a provider to uh, use for ETFs. Now, the last thing is, since we know small or short-term bubbles can come up in niches and long-term bubbles come from where the assets are and, and how they vote for management, I thought it'd be really interesting to highlight one very specific proxy example, and that's Van Eck. So Vanek has niche funds like the gold miners. They also um, have the power to vote those things. And this is a more progressive approach, right? They've actually gone and made plans to, to use an entire process. It's very focused on governance, but I, I gotta say this is a step in the right direction. So what is the point? The point is that today ETFs are causing bubbles. In the short run, it's in subsectors. In the long run, it's in controlling the direction and governance of companies. But ETFs are not responsible, in my humble opinion, for the markets being at all-time highs.
thank you for your time. 